What's up guys? How are you all doing? Hey, welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be checking out how to put together a smart plug along with an ESP8266 DHT11 temperature sensor, temperature slash humidity sensor, so that, that way we can sense the temperature in the room and turn on and off either a fan or a heater, depending on what time of the year it is, accordingly. If that sounds like something to be interesting to you, stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on MI Sperry. Hey, and a huge shout out to JLC PCB for today's video. This video is sponsored by them. They were the ones that helped provide the circuit boards that we'll be using in today's video. So go and check them out at jlcpcb.com for all your PCB fab needs. All right, guys, to get started on this build, it's gonna be very, very simple. I use, I'm using one of the TP-Link uh, smart plugs is what I'm gonna be using. I used one of these in my Christmas video, I believe, uh, for last year. And so if you wanna know how to uh, set these up with your home Wi-Fi and all that stuff, I suggest go check out that video because I'm not gonna go over it again in this video. But basically, you'll set this up with your home Wi-Fi, download an app, and you set it all up and get it connected to your uh, home Wi-Fi system. And remember the IP address of this and uh, in the in the video I show you how to do a, a DHCP reservation and whatnot to make sure you know the IP address for this guy because you will need that in the home assistant config portion of this as well as you'll need a charger um, I had this one just laying around it's one of them USB chargers you don't need a whole lot of power because all you're powering is the sensor and an ESP 8266 all right and then you can wire it up yourself, or you can snag one of these snazzy little boards that I got. I got this from JLC PCB. They're our sponsor for uh, today. And you know what? I, I, I love it when I get sponsored by people that have uh, things that are just awesome. And I'm not saying that because they're sponsoring me. I'm really not. I'm saying it because it really is good. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you take a look at it real quick. Let's zoom in. I'm gonna grab one of the boards. These boards are great. This is a ENIG process, which is the Electronics uh, Nickel Immersion Gold um, process. They do very, very good. The sizing specs and everything were exactly within spec, exactly where I needed it to be for the uh, the USB thing to actually fit onto the end of it. I mean, I, I am very, very impressed. And the the uh, turnaround time is amazing. It's really fast uh, when you do the turnaround. You may get your boards within like a week or so. And that's, I mean, that's from fab to shipping. I mean, it's 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 a really good service. I'm actually really excited about it. So go check those people out. Um, go over to jlcpcb.com, links down in the description, and uh, try it out. I mean, I've used different batch PCBs and things like that for uh, uh, doing PCB pooling and whatnot. And honestly, I get really high quality boards for way cheaper. And I actually get them a lot quicker because you don't have to wait for other people to uh, fill up the panel from our friends at JLCPCB. So go check them out. That's awesome. So let's go ahead and we'll assemble this. All we got to do is put the ESP8266 in. Of course, we will program this uh, in a different uh, device or program it's laid off. I also have um, devices that I'm selling that are for the programming of these. If you want to check it out, there's an ESP8266 programmer's helper down in the Tindy store. This will help us uh, program this up. So I'll get it all hooked up and we'll check out the code. Okay guys, so now all we gotta do is throw some code on here. So right here I've got the uh, the code that we're looking at here. So all you do, you can download this from my uh, link down in the description, from my GitHub link, uh, just download this. And all you will have to enter is you need to enter your MQTT server ID, okay? Uh, so that'll be uh, the IP address of your Raspberry Pi or whatever you're running uh, the MQTT server on. You need the MQTT user, name and the password and you need also your topic uh, make sure when you define your topic in your home assistant config which we'll look at here in just a minute um, that it matches whatever you type in here i just named mine ha bedroom temp because that's where it's going to be it's going to be in my bedroom okay guys so what i have here is the yaml file you'll basically just put these different pieces in i have that included in the link down below so that you can look uh pull down this for yourself and edit it all you have to do is make sure you have the bedroom temp set and in these two different spots you set your above temperature and your below temperature and that's it and it turns the heater on and off you can go through it yourself if you want to code link is down in the github uh, section uh, link down below 
Okay, so welcome to my floor. I've got, <laughs> this is the floor of my bedroom. I've got a heater sitting here that's an oscillatory heater. I've got it all plugged in to right here. And then I've got my sensor is plugged in. I don't know if you can see it, but the sensor is plugged into the little uh, uh, charger here. And so it's sensing the temperature. Now, let me show you <clears throat> if I can, well, if I can get it to come up. This is gonna be very crude. But you can see the temperature is right here. So I think I can even click it and it'll bring it up. So there's the temperature. It's even graphing it for me. But we're at about 77 uh, degrees or so. So it's been a warm day today. It's starting to get warmer. So we need to figure out how we can uh, cool this thing off. Okay, so we've got some of these little things. What these are is these are some of those little, uh, oh, those little granite cubes you're supposed to put in a drink. So they're really cold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it on the sensor and we should see this start taking off. So let's move this out of the way. Put this up here for now. So let's take this and we'll set it on top of the sensor. It should start getting cold. You should see it start plummeting, hopefully. Let's see if it'll go down. There's 75. May take a little bit to propagate. 73. We're getting there and there it goes and we even saw it turn on now the heater's on now if we take it off of it should start warming back up but as you can see the bedroom heater is on I don't know if you can see that that's that top switch right here so we should see it turn off once it gets back to let's see if we can blow on it And there it goes. I got it back up to 80 degrees, so it shut off. So there we go. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it for the video today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. And again, if you want to pick up this uh, little device off of the Tendi store, just check the link down below. I'll have these available uh, hopefully soon. Um, I'll probably have a limited quantity to start with because I need to order some more parts. I have enough circuit boards, but I need to order enough parts to, uh, to build up a whole bunch of them. But if you would like one, definitely let me know down in the comments and check out that Tendi store. I'll probably be giving some of these away. We're getting really close to 10000 subscribers so thank you so much for the support hit that like button hit that subscribe button when we get to 10,000 subscribers we're gonna be doing some giveaways and a whole bunch of stuff it's gonna be a party so guys make sure you hit that subscribe button check me out on all the social medias down below the links are below and guys with that that ought to do it I will see you next time